Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see behind me up there, we have another array of solar panels on the roof. We're going to show you how we got them up there, how we installed them to the roof and how they tied up with the inverter from part one of this series. So if you want to sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea and watch how we go about things, let us know in the comments what you think of our methods and practices. If you've got things we can improve, we are here for that. Please do let us know. Let's get straight to it. So we can see Matty minus his gloves, knocking the existing tiles out the way, and he's just going to lift the one we need to grind the back out of. These are only loosely nailed down, it's just so the roofers can keep everything in a line, they're not really affixing as such. He's going to get that out the way and pop us the bracket down, and these are bulk brackets, roof hooks, whatever you want to call them, and we're using the wider bulk fixings to secure those in place. Usually you can only get a couple of screws into a rafter due to the width of them, but if you can get more, it is always better. You need to remember to tighten up the nut on the back of these bulk fastenings because they do allow some movement and adjustment. You want to make sure you've got that rock solid and it's sat above the tile below. It's not in contact with it. I'm then going to grind out the back of the tile that's going to sit over the top of that hook. Now that's to stop it cracking in the future. So if there's any movement in the roof due to wind loading or whatever, we've got a bit of separation between the metal hook and the back of the tile. So it's not going to result in that cracking in the future. And Nathan's been sped up to double speed here just to get this segment done as quickly as possible. And then he's going to jump up onto the roof and put this tile over the hook to show you what I mean in terms of the distance we need to try and keep off the hook. So first thing is to get the row of tiles back in alignment, make sure everything's bedded in as needed. And then he's going to drop over the ground out tile on top of this roof hook. You see, drop that into position and make sure you get everything back into alignment and locked together so it's nice and solid. And then you should have the hook covered by the tile and the tile bedded down onto the one below as you found it, but with a little gap there just on top of the hook. We do want to grind out enough to just cut the hook in. We don't want to take any more than necessary. And now you can see all the pegs on the roof laid out, ready to go for our rail and panels. So a great tip for anyone who is getting into solar is to make sure you find a good supplier of tiles. And we've got a great reclamation yard very close to us. And I'll show you who they are in just a second. So these are the guys, it is the Reclaimed Company, they're just outside York. They have a massive range of tiles and other reclaimed materials from building sites. They do supply through their website, we come and click and collect. If you order the night before, it's ready for you the next morning and it is cheap as chips. They didn't pay our sponsored this, we come and use their facility very often. If you are in the solar industry or in construction in general and you're needing bits and pieces, that you've perhaps damaged through the course of your work or just to tie in with an existing building well worth checking out they also do hot box stoves and gnr here as well and i'll drop a link in the description for anyone who does want to check them out so you can see up in the loft we've got our cables coming in through that gable wall through the conduit that you can see popped along horizontally at the bottom there and then we jump out into the two sets of strings in red and black i appreciate that's not the current colors for the solar cables but we will be popping some markings over these as well and then out onto the roof through some oval tube between the felt laps so you can see that and then the second string runs out over to this side and you'll see why we've got two strings on this array in a moment when we have a look at this out on site sorry outside when it's finished up so you can see there we've got the um, cables passing through the oval tube and straight out under the tiles where we grind and nibber the tile off to make sure we're not squashing those at all. I know you can get the zip deck tile kits, we've got some actually, but these ensure that the roof surface itself stays as originally designed and I think it works better to be honest. I may be wrong on that, we are new to this after all, but for me it makes more sense to leave the roof in place as far as possible rather than grinding out holes to pop a uh, I think it's a deck tile through the surface of it. So we're going for this method at present. You see we've got Matthew and Nathan out on the roof and we've got the rails. I've popped my head out of the Veluxes and they're running in a vertical arrangement because these panels are going to be landscape. So you can see we've got those there. We've got the hooks on for these rails here as well. And we're going to start lifting some panels up in a moment and um, get this roof fitted up. I'll show you that going on in a minute. You can see here how the hooks attach onto the rail. So this one's on loose at the minute because we need to take this broken tile out and replace it. Um, but they fasten with these nuts on the back there. You need to make sure you get them done up to the right torque. 
and then it holds the rail nice and securely in position. There are set distances between all of these hooks as well based on the rail system you're using. So you need to ensure you're covering that off. You can see the guys have got those in place over at that side, ready to roll. And Nathan gave a review on these Klein Tools knee pads that you can see he's wearing there. Matthew's got some on as well, up in this corner here. And um, they do seem to be legitimately good. You will notice they are slightly different. Nathan's got the fancier pair and Matthew's been relegated to the slightly less featured set. I don't know what the difference is. I think that set's got firm outers, whereas this one's got more of a hard shell outer. Is that right, Nathan? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like quite soft, but like flexible. Yeah, they've just got a harder covering on the outside of them, but they are still flexy and padded. Whereas Matthew's are more of a fabric, but they look to be holding up all right. Or oh, that's just showing Matthew doesn't do much work, Nathan, depending on how you look at it. So I'm going to jump outside and we'll get some panels lifted up and onto this roof in just a minute. So we're up on the roof now and you can see Matthew is busy adding an extra bit of rail on. So we've got the joining strip that you need to use on these systems. Um, just to link the rail together to keep it rigid and firm so you can see us up there fastening those up with the ratchet driver we do have the m12 ratchet somewhere but we're doing this by hand for the minute matthew must be after having a workout and yeah we've got our tile repaired we did have a breakage as you can see down here so we've um, gone to the reclaimers yard pop a little um, video and description in of where you can find that particular reclaimer yard it is really good actually and we've got that fastened in now so there's no damaged tiles left on the roof if you do break any you need to replace them, don't just bury them under the panels because they will let water through and that's the most awkward place to then get at them. We're now going to level our rails off, so we're going to put a line through across all these and make sure there's no ups and downs. This roof's pretty straight and square to be fair, so it shouldn't be too bad as long as we set our brackets on the pegs or hooks to the same place on the rail all the way along, which the guys seem to have done. But we'll just check by running a long length of rail between and a level, make sure we're good and square and then yeah we're going to start lifting panels up we've got the four in landscape up here we've got a landscape panel below these veluxes one above the veluxes and then four up this side the veluxes were slightly too wide for a landscape panel to fit square in the middle and then have everything joined together as i would have liked so we've kind of gone for a u-shape at this side for a string of six panels and then the four straight up at this side for a string of four panels and we'll show you all that coming together in just a minute so this is our lifting rig and it is a little bit different to how we'd normally have this set up. You'll know our scaffolders have done as a split platform to gain access. So we don't have an open gate on the top rails. They did put us on a long pole to kind of attach our lifting arm a bit higher, but we wasn't happy with its stability. So we popped it down so we're still on part of the main scaffold. We've got our little winch mounted onto the scaffold pole as well. That's locked in nice and tight and the idea is using a motorized system with a reverse brake these can never then drop onto us at ground level and just for extra belts and braces we have tied off our lifting arm as well as it been through a secured rope as well i mean this rope is rated to pull land rovers out of ditches so it should be absolutely fine but we wanted to be double sure we wasn't going to have an issue and I attach on a long tether so I can kind of control the panel if it starts to move in the breeze. And equally, I'm good 10 feet behind the panel as well. I'm not stood directly underneath it. It's a little bit deceptive at this angle. You see where the guys lift it over the top of the rail. It is all still fastened on. So if the worst is to happen, it can't go very far. So you can see the guys are up there now. We've had a tile break on us while we're going up and down fitting the panels. Very common that that happens. So they're just swapping it out. We have a stock of tiles. You can see on this roof already, there's been a repair when a chimney's been taken down. So that's had some tiles fitted in place. And obviously ours are gonna live under the array. So aesthetically, it doesn't really matter because the new ones we're fitting are a little less weathered than the ones that are already down. You can see we've got our seven panels up so far. So we've got five on this string and a couple on that string. So we've just got three more to lift up we're going to put this one in last and that just gives us access onto the roof to access both sides so we're tying all of our cables up we've gone out in copex with our string wires and then we're going to tie up the cables under the panels as we go to make sure they're all nice and safe and in place so the guys are just getting this last little array finished at this side so this is a four panel array just fixing the last one in there before they cut off the rails and make sure everything is hunky dory on that one it's all connected into the inverter inside and we're going to run through some testing on that just to explain the six on this sander uh, backwards c 
here if you like and then we've got a four up there we could have shifted this side ever so slightly nearer to the velux but it would have made access for any repairs that might need to be made to the velux if it starts leaking or whatever and the tiles have to be lifted it would have made that awkward so we tried to just keep away from that and allow a bit of space and equally at this side if we was to have moved this array along to the next row of rafters because obviously our rails fixed to the rafters we would have been impinging over that velux and we didn't want to be installing a row of noggins to hold and then hold an entire rail we wanted to fix them onto the rafter so we've ended up with that little gap just in at the top there it's sort of unavoidable based on trying to make sure our um, rails do sit within the um, distances from the end of the panels so obviously we're tied to I think it's approximately 300 mil on these particular panels where the clamps have to fix to hold it down so if we move that rail in either direction we've then got to shift the panel and obviously if we're coming over a whole 600 mil on this side for that next rafter we're going to oversail that velux so it's kind of how it's ended up being we've still got one to pop in the bottom here we've left that one to last so we had good access onto the roof to do everything else and once the guys have done that i'll get a bit of footage and show you it all finished up so i don't know if this will work i'll try and zoom in it might get a bit unstabilized so i do apologize you can see up there they've got the end caps on the rail you can see that and they're just going to lift this last panel in to finish this little string of six and then that's the array finished so you can see um, these are quite large, Matthew's massive, and that panel is nearly as tall as him. So when you are handling these on the roof, it is windy, you need to be careful. And you can see the guys are gloved up, and we've got the suction cups, so we're making sure we're extra careful. And then on the end of these rails, there's end clamps, so they're different to the mid clamps that you might see between the panels. So at the end, they're just a flush cap. So again, I'm going to zoom out because the stabilisation is really not that good. But they're just sliding those under there and now they're going to butt this up to the other panel just to the right of it once they've made the connections. So we need to connect these cables underneath the panel and then make sure we're cable tying those up onto the rails so they're off the roof and out the way. As you can see, Matty's just working away doing that now and then they'll tie these up. So that's all done and dusted. And that's it. You can see they've got the roof panels on now so that part's all done we can't see from here but there is a bit of rail to cut off on the bottom from where those last clamps are I'll try and zoom you in on this side just so you can see a little bit of silver rail there so we put an end cap on these i'm assuming they need cutting down we can't see the ones at the top because of the angle we're at and this is a, a good one to look at because i'm able to get so far away it's unusual to be able to see so much off this roof but you see i think that's a tidy result based on what we were faced with at the start and those for looks is a little bit awkward and um, yeah I'm pleased with that I think that looks pretty decent we'll go and see what the testing looks like in the garage and I'll show you up on the scaffold when the guys have got it all tidied up so you will see I am at the inverter we've got this um, ready to rock and roll I've disconnected PV1 and they're into my test leads I was able to do that with the isolator in the off position connect them then return the power back on I'm using the PV check from TIS you see this is kind of a multifunction tester for your PV testing it has a few different test modes you can see we've got IVCK which is um, testing the strings in terms of current and it does some insulation resistance test as well there's PE continuity um, you've got insulation testing and efficiency testing now I've also got the um, PV ISO test I think it's called which is just insulation resistance and voltage measurements i've shown that before on the channel so this is another option on that if we look at the iv um, ck check you can see i'm measuring voltage on there now if i go into the help menu if you're not sure how these work if it's new to us it's often unfamiliar so we see we need our pos and neg connected into the solar panels and that's isolated from the inverter we then need an earth off to an earthing point and then the c probe just this blue one here running off to the frame of the panel and then there's an iridium meter which um, also needs to be connected in as well that's an optional extra with this system so you can see we've got our voltage but we're not measuring any iridium because it's not currently connected and if i hit test it'll run through the process of obtaining some values now i would expect this rpe to be measuring um, as an unacceptable result because I've not attached this probe onto the array framework because I'm remote from it um, and you can see it's given us a no because we've measured over 200 ohms it's obviously looking for a value underneath that but we have measured above 100 meg ohms there so just to demonstrate that test you do need the iridians um, clamp on there to run that one in full if we go on to 
uh, insulation resistance test is another example and again if we hit the help button it'll tell you how to connect your probes up so again the array is in isolation from the inverter You've got your positive negative and your earth connection as i have got now in my position again the earth is taken off the inverter our string is uh, sorry our array frame is earth because it's accessible through the veluxes so there is a connection between those two points so if we did have an issue in terms of our insulation resistance between the string cabling and true earth this would pick it up. Now you'll know I've dropped it down to 500 volts because our SPDs are currently in circuit and they would affect the values if we was measuring at a thousand volts. I will take them out of circuit and do it at a thousand volts as well. This was just a quick way of demonstrating to you guys on the channel how this works. So you can see we've got 524 volts and we've cleared 100 mega ohms, which is fantastic. You can also do an efficiency test. Now again, you're going to need to connect a few bits of extra equipment with this you can see there's a clamp meter that's going on the posi it also needs to be connected into the inverter and measured in parallel off it if you like so you've got your positive neg on the strings and you then need the slr02 probe as well connected into there now i have got the clamp as you can see here but these are not currently connected into the inverter we're not currently running and i don't have that slr02 um, device as yet so I'm not able to show you that test at the minute but I will do in the future but yeah just to show you the test instrument this has absolutely everything on it and I'll show you that this can go up to a thousand volts if you go into the settings option you can see you can swing that up to a thousand volts hit save and that's ready for me now when I come back to carry out that test in a minute when I've unwired the DC um, SPDs we'll be able to do that if you're wanting to do a PE continuity test again hit the help menu if you're not sure where your leads goes you can see you need to be into earth and then connect up onto the frame and that will verify that you've got a connection between those two points and give you a value of resistance for it and we'll be doing that as well on this job the guys are going to whip up there and um, connect up a wonder lead for me so we can probe all this up and get some test measurements so there we are kind of buttoned up let's lift this off now the way we do still need to run through the app with the customer i've shown you that on the channel before so we won't do it on this video see i've got the strings back reconnected it's just doing its boot up um, before we start to show any measurements see that's just waiting so it'll do its little thing and we've got our power cable in our ct our um, smart connection product wi-fi dongle whatever you want to call it and then the strings so two of those and our F connection onto the inverter. Also got an F connection through the supply cable. DC SPDs, the AC meter, the two DC isolating strings. Uh, we can pop those into the on position now. I believe we'll have that in the on position underneath. It does have a DC isolator, but you've heard my views on that before in terms of relying on that for isolation of the strings. We always fit external isolators. So we've got our conduit across with those fire metal clips. You can see they are metal variety over to our AC isolator which then runs into the consumer unit for those who want to see that aspect of this job the video before this in part one covers that we've then got our dc cables that are running up and out into the conduit on the outside wall again i showed you on that video you can see this is running through its checks now so when these inverters first boot up they run through a checking process so you've got about 40 seconds it's showing there's no battery connected so this hybrid inverter is set up ready for one to be installed in the future we've got plenty of space for one or two down here if we need them um, but for the minute it's not going to be there we're just relying on the pv i've run through the testing now so this is the pv ice test i mentioned this does your voltage insulation resistance um it'll fault find as well continuity and this one is the pv check and again these are from tis and this does your ivck your low um, resistance for your pe continuity test insulation resistance some efficiency testing and then you've got settings that so both these instruments will save results and you can then print out and issue a full test schedule that will go alongside your mcs notification we all know we need to record our test results for mcs and hand over to the customers so these store these and we'll produce them as a printout or a digital file for you to pass along for both those applications which is fantastic got the dc spds back into the system now again string one string two these labeled up string one string two you've got labels everywhere so as you saw up in the loft earlier we've got the stickers on the cable runs the same in here where there's any dc cables you must put labels on to let anyone know that if they're made in isolation they need to bear in mind that there could be voltages off the strings um into here this first section here obviously the strings drop down they can only be isolated up at the array itself these isolators wouldn't take voltage off them so putting your warning labels on is essential i think that's a nice neat tidy job to be fair um 
obviously we've got the conduit across so we'll run through how the system works again we've got our mcb in there which feeds down into this um, ac isolator across the conduit running down into the meter off the meter up and into the input on the inverter we've then got our dc strings which run down into the dc isolators through the spd up into the solax inverter to feed it lovely electricity and you can see at the minute it's late on in the day and um, we are at i think it's gone five o'clock now so the guys will be happy 4 30 actually so we've got 240 watts that this is kicking out at the minute it is um, not especially bright out there as you will have seen with the videos we've made earlier we had to jump off the roof once or twice for rain and let the roof dry out you see we've got 147 volts on pv1 and we're getting 110 ish watts out of that one so on pv2 we are getting 225 so that's the six six panels and bear in mind this isn't now voc this is in operation so the voltage drops off ever so slightly when they are generating so obviously we're not in the sunshine yet we're going to pop back here tomorrow because we've got some sunnier weather so i may get some footage to show you some higher readings off that but again we've got our labels all on ready to go for when the hybrid battery system eventually ever gets added in the future and this is all online for the customer as well to now monitor our ct clamps also in there as well so we'll jump up and have a look at the panels on the scaffold the guy should have finished up there and have a little chat through everything on the roof and otherwise we're about buttoned up with this one and down at the inverter so as you can see these are the four panels running up this side here We've got our end caps on and clamped down so these have to be between 225 and 400 mil i believe is what the guy said for the clamps we're well within that so we need to get that each side and then obviously your mid rails all the way up to make sure they tie up you can see on the top one up here we've also got the end clamps in I'll zoom you in a bit so you can see that and again the caps on either side so there's no mid rails on that particular panel they don't clamp in the between them we'll go over to that side and have a look in just a sec but yeah this was just explaining the rafters on this one obviously we've got a rafter under this rail a rafter under this rail if we were to move that over we'd have to move this across because of the clamps and it would impede over the volux so we had to have that space in and likewise at the other side we couldn't then bring that over nearer because we'd be stopping anyone from being able to get work in position on that and it still wouldn't narrow this gap you can see there you've got four ridges between that we've only got sort of one ridge over there when we go and stand in line with it it doesn't look bad anyway i don't think i think it looks quite nice bit of a feature customers happy with it which is what it's all about and these are in landscape so we've got our four panels here on one string and then the six on this other string here which gives the customer a total of 10 panels so 4.15 kilowatts and we'll see how they perform in sunlight so i hope you enjoyed this video we've now got 4.15 kilowatts of solar pv up on that roof that is now generating the customer is very happy with the outcome we think it's turned out very well as well and obviously this one is um, set up ready for those batteries in the future should the customer wish to install them at the minute we've not gone down that road right now they're waiting to see how the system generates and build some money back up into the pot to add them to the mix but that's the beauty of putting a hybrid inverter in at the point of installation if you have plans for that in the future everything is ready just to drop the batteries in there's no additional equipment needed outside of them and it makes a lot of sense i'm sure we'll be back here fitting batteries in the not too distant future if you've got any tips for us on alongside what we've done with this install especially around white solar dc cable please do drop them in below if there's things you would have done differently please let us know we are here for improving with this we're very new to solar and battery storage we are improving all the time thanks to you guys feeding back and i do appreciate all of those comments and interaction on social media and it's great to hear one or two of you have got some value from the stuff we are sharing through the course of these videos as well please do get involved in the discussion and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this one that's the end of this install little two-part series i hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching